words are the raw material of law. Obviously, all law is expressed in words. Legal agreements, legal rules, legal decisions, which can send a man to prison or can decide who must pay and who must receive a sum of money, are all expressed in words. To, go, to do good work in law, in the legal world, you need to have a high level of skill in the language the law is expressed in. So for English language law, of course, you need a high level of skill in reading, writing, speaking and listening to English, quite apart from knowledge of the technical language of law. One reason for this is that a lot of money can depend on a minor mistake in the language of a legal document. And there are some important cases where a court has had to make a decision about how to interpret a document which has been badly written, where the meaning is not clear. If your law firm makes this kind of mistake, it is at best embarrassing. Your clients will expect your English to be excellent, and for good reason. Your skill in reading English in the legal world is just as important as your skill in writing. If there's an act of parliament or a legal document which is unclear, or where there's more than one possible interpretation, you need to notice this. The same goes for e reading any legal document or a letter. If you're working in a legal environment, the most important advice in this entire lecture is that you should work on your general English. However proud you may be that you have good English, please don't be too proud to work to improve it. I've been professionally involved with language for a long time and I am always keen to improve my English. There's nobody, no lawyer, no writer, no journalist, no linguist who is so good that they can't improve their English. I'm not only referring to learning new words, I'm not only referring to your ability to understand complex legal documents. It's equally important, especially in law, to develop your skill in writing and speaking clearly and accurately in all situations, including situations where you're dealing with a simple subject. Legal Training TV offers a series of lectures which I prepared some time ago to give you some guidance about how to improve your general English. They were made with the needs of lawyers in mind, but they're not specifically about the language of law. And I strongly encourage you to watch these and to work on the suggestions which I give for improving your general English. This really is the most important point. Good general English is so important for lawyers. But in the rest of this lecture, I'm going to give an overview of the shape of the law in English-speaking countries, which would help you find your way around some of the more specialised language which lawyers use. Before I do that, I should just comment briefly about British and American English, really for the benefit of anyone whose first language is not English. And if you've not been long in the English-speaking world, and uh, once I've uh, done with this topic, we'll get on to specifically legal language. In a moment I'm going to say something about the difference between English law and United States law. First, some comments on the differences in language between British and American English. If you speak and write standard British English, you can communicate with Americans easily, and the opposite is also true. There are small differences in the spelling of some words in America and Britain, but there aren't many, and they will not affect your ability to communicate. It's a good idea, if you're not a native English speaker, to, to decide, to make a choice, whether you're going to use British spellings or American spellings, and be consistent with it. It looks bad to use a mixture of spellings in the same document. There are some small differences in the meanings of common words in British and American English. I'm talking about general English now, not specifically legal English. There are also some differences in grammar. Most native speakers of English could not give you a detailed description of those differences. You don't need to study them in order to have good functional English. It's a good idea to take either British or American as your standard, or the, the, the English of some other country, Australia for example, if that's where you're living and working, and stick to it. If you, if you mix up various forms of English, that might sound a bit strange. Some English speakers, including some Americans, regard British English as better, more elegant, more correct. 
I would say it's a matter of personal taste. I don't agree with that. I think all forms of English have good and bad points. Mm -hmm.